how do you get the most out of your rain barrels? A lot of people have them, and my guess is that you probably don't use them very much. I'm gonna show you today how to actually set up a pump system so you can pump rainwater to flush your toilets or water your garden or whatever you wanna do. All right, let's get to work. So a lot of people have rain barrels in their house, and my sense is that not that many people get that much use out of them. You know, when I first got them, I could put a watering can underneath, but it took forever to fill. And so I found that they would be full all summer long, and I didn't feel like I was getting a good use out of them. So what I've done is I buy these from my city for, I think that my city sells them for 20 bucks each. Most cities do. You can uh, make them yourself out of barrels. Don't buy... Unless you're getting it from your city subsidized, like don't go to Home Depot and buy a rain barrel. They'll charge you hundreds of dollars and you can either get them from your city or make them yourself for 20 or $30. Um, so unless you really need them to look fancy, just find a way of getting them on the cheap. Um, you're going to want something that goes in your uh, eave trough spout so that you capture the water coming through. I'll put a link to this one, which I really like. It, uh, it has like a mesh so it captures leaf litter coming down and keeps it from getting into your barrel. And then what I do is I have one of these on every single downspout at the three corners of my house. So the corner by the driveway doesn't have one, but the other three corners all have a downspout. And I've got two barrels at each one of those corners. And then what I do is the barrels are, are networked together, right? So what's going to happen is these two, right, as this one fills up, which is actually where the water enters, as this one fills up, it just equalizes the level between the two. And actually all six of my rain barrels um, are networked together. So actually this downspout here comes out and goes over to the next two, which are a few centimeters lower than this one. So the top of them comes down to about here. And then they're networked to the two at the next corner, which are low. And then those two go into the house, which I'll show you in a second. So coming out of these uh, rainwater collectors that come through the downspout then is this little length of hose. You know, you can buy uh, connectors because you need it to be sort of female on both sides. Uh, so you can cut up your hose put it back together again with uh, bits of plumbing like I did. And then I bought these slightly fancy ones with valves so that if I ever wanted to you know, prevent them from filling, say in the winter or who knows what, you can always prevent water from going into your barrels as well. So in total right now, I actually have seven rain barrels. I could honestly use more. I feel like if it rains for two or three minutes, they're all full. It's amazing how much water your roof can connect. So all of them are connected at the bottom like I showed you, so they kind of behave as one, except uh, the one that feeds into the house is lower, so they all get progressively lower. They're either the same height if they're side by side, or they get progressively lower so that they're constantly draining into one barrel, and then that barrel drains down to the basement. And I put this switch on here, it was just the cheapest one I could find, so that I could turn off the flow if I ever wanted to from the outside, which is a nice feature. Um, obviously I had to get a hammer drill to go through the cinder blocks, but luckily my basement wall is cinder block, so it only meant a couple centimeters of cement that I had to drill through. And so let's go inside and look at what it looks like downstairs. Okay, so you can see here is where water comes in from outside, turns the corner, and I also have a, a valve on the inside so that if I ever need to prevent, you know, rainwater from coming through, I can stop it either on the outside or the inside, which I recommend. And then here's the system. So, like I said, the water comes in the house, goes in the side of the barrel, um, about 15 centimeters down. I have a, a float valve in there, so when it's full, it turns off like the back of your toilet. So here's what it looks like down inside. You can see that it's actually filling up pretty slowly now. My rain barrels are almost empty. And you can see there's the float valve. Um, so when it gets to uh, the height that I've got the float valve at, it uh, it shuts off so that you don't flood your basement, which for me has never happened, but obviously that's something that you would want to avoid. This barrel is not a rain barrel. I just got this from uh, Rural King, I think, for maybe $20. Just cut the top off and made this little wood thing that I could attach the pump to. Um, that I could attach the pump to so I could get in and out. For whatever reason, it was sealed with these 20 holes. Then this is just an on-demand pump with a little bit of a debris filter. So one side, the in-valve goes down to the bottom of the barrel. This one goes up and out so that I can uh, water my garden. And um, I even have it set up so I can flush my toilets with it if I want to. Um. Okay, so then, all right, so back outside, coming up from that on-demand pump, I just got this uh, 
garden hose uh, spigot from the hardware store. Drilled through, instead of drilling through the concrete twice, I drilled through the uh, wood, uh, which was quite a bit easier. And there you go, I've got on-demand rainwater being pumped, actively pumped and pressurized from my rain barrels. And you'd be surprised how fast you can run out of the rainwater. It's actually really cool to use it. Um, and yeah, this one is set up to, to water my straw bale garden, which uh, I'll put a link to that video at the end in case you want to check that out. So that's how you can uh, set up a pretty simple gravity-fed uh, pressurized pump system for your rain barrels. Just tie them all together, drill one hole down to your basement, collect it all with a, with a float valve, and an on-demand pump, send it back out to wherever you need it to be. Uh, maybe I'll make a separate video showing you how I set it up to flush toilets. Um, definitely that's a more advanced plumbing situation. You want to be pretty careful about all this.